Here's a fascinating fact possibly related to you about episodic memory. Research into links between memory and handedness suggests that ambidextrous people enjoy better episodic memory than people who perform almost all tasks with either one hand or the other. Neat, right? Yeah, but hang on, what about those who aren't ambidextrous? Well, never fear, we will define episodic memory first so the term is actually useful for you and then dig into some episodic memory training secrets and special resources you can use starting today. We'll talk about four step-by-step -step ways to improve episodic memory and I'm sure you're going to want to combine them all, so let's get started. Hey there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com where I help mature learners like you take mental adventures that help you learn and remember more than you ever imagined possible. If you're new here, start now by getting subscribed and clicking the bell icon so you don't miss new free memory training and our epic live streams. And hit that thumbs up for memory and let's go. Now, by definition, episodic memory involves the recollection of specific events, situations, and experiences. Each person remembers a specific event in his or her unique way, and so examples of episodic memory would include your memory of your first day of school or your first kiss. Mm -hmm. Apart from your overall recall of the event itself, episodic memories also involve your memory of the location and time that the event occurred. So episodic memory differs from something like semantic memory, which refers to your understanding of factual knowledge and disconnected from any specific time and place. For example, the knowledge that the sky appears to be blue has no specific place. But think of it like this. Drawing upon your semantic memory is like looking an item up in an encyclopedia, perhaps about the sky. You find what you're looking for, but have no specific recollection of when or even how you acquired the semantic information of the sky being blue. Well, perhaps some people remember when and how they learned this fact, but I certainly don't. And because most of us don't remember such detail, some researchers like McCoon, Ratcliffe, and Dell don't consider semantic memories to be much like memories at all. They say that facts are known rather than remembered. Now, that might take us into the semantics a bit too much for our purposes, but hey, memory science, you gotta love it. And here's what matters for memory training purposes. If you want to remember past events with all the full technicolor detail you deserve, you must strengthen your episodic memory. That means developing your recall of both the story of what happened, where it happened, and when. But first, let's talk about why you would want to improve your episodic memory in the first place. In everyday life, Episodic memories come to our rescue all the time. They are essential to recalling the name of someone you have previously met, recall the current date, or remember to go to your dentist appointment. Episodic memories also enable you to recall and reminisce personal experiences that are an important part of your life with other people who are part of those events. Such memories create a sense of personal history and a shared history with other individuals in your life. And more importantly, episodic memories allow you to travel back in time and be consciously aware of a re-experience of important life experiences. So put it this way, if you could strengthen your episodic memory, you would be able to remember many more details about past experiences and events at a much better rate of accuracy and personal satisfaction. A stronger episodic memory would also result in improved long-term memory in students, enabling them to do better in studies. And more importantly, strengthening your episodic memory would enable you to perform better in all aspects of your life starting today. Think about this though, the older you get, the more events you witness and the more experiences you acquire. If you could retain and recall all of those memories in detail, imagine how rich a repertoire of knowledge and experience you would have to pass on to the next generation. Plus, all that wonderful episodic detail will be very, very powerful when you're using memory techniques. So, you may not be able to control aging, but there are ways to ensure your brain stays young and healthy even as the years pile on. And that way you can enjoy using memory techniques up until the very end. At least, that's my plan. So the question is, how exactly do you improve your episodic memory? First, exercise your brain regularly, period. That is the most effective strategy to improve memory and retention. But here's the catch. To get tangible results, your brain exercises must be targeted towards specific goals. Playing brain exercise games on your smartphone is not necessarily brain exercise, nor will doing crossword puzzles keep your brain young and active. I have the proof on my blog and podcast and the link is down below. In brief, rather than improving your brain in its entirety, playing crossword puzzles or brain games on a smartphone will only improve your abilities for those games. One of my favorite and profoundly better memory exercises involves watching movies. So let's dig in to how this one works with four step-by-step -step strategies to improve episodic memory using movies. One, 
watch a movie a few hours later, try to remember the beginning, middle, and end of the plot with some details about the characters. Names, clothes, objects they handled, houses they lived in, street names, maybe even dialogues. Two, retell the entire story to a friend or your partner. Just make sure it's not a movie they've been waiting to watch themselves. It can be extremely hazardous to reveal plot spoilers. Three, for added benefits, verbally recount the movie and then write a description in your own words. This will exercise more parts of your memory and deeply improve recall. Four, another related method is to listen to a friend retell the latest episode of your favorite show. Commit to memory at least three major pieces of information from that story as your friend tells it to you. To make this memory exercise even more powerful, add a memory palace. This will help you encode more details about the movies you watch and in no way interfere with your viewing pleasure. In fact, it will increase it. And by the way, if you're interested in learning more about memorizing plot points, check out an episode of the Magnetic Memory Method podcast all about how I memorized story architecture and got so good at it, I wound up working as a story consultant and wrote two books on screenwriting. I've linked this in the description below. Also, if you have no idea how to use a memory palace or still haven't taken my free course, the link to that is also in the description below. I hope you'll join the thousands of people who have benefited from these simple video tutorials and eBooks. Now, for another means of improving your episodic memory, use your own life. I've long advocated journaling, including tools like the Freedom Journal, and more recently I started using a five-year snapshot journal. Now, just be mindful of the things around you and repeat the story elements in a few sentences for two to five minutes per day. Developing this simple journaling practice will help you be more mindful throughout the day and give you a simple and quick memory exercise. Developing this skill is important because being mindful and paying attention to everyday events is essential to creating complete memories and helping you recall information, facts, details about your life. It doesn't matter. You'll get a memory boost across the board. And when you combine mindfulness with the magic of memory palaces, you can move information into long-term memory faster and with predictability and reliable permanence. Sounds good, right? You know it is. So hit that thumbs up if you haven't already for this last fact about episodic memory I absolutely love. So episodic memory was coined by Endel Tulving in 1972, and that's the same year Fergus Craig and Robert S. Lockhart identified the levels of processing effect that we've talked about so much on this channel. In fact, you might hear us talking about it in one of these videos recommended for you right here. Until then, my friends, thanks for the view. Keep the conversation going below, and until we speak again, hit that thumbs up and keep yourself magnetic.